Mark, I'm ready whenever you are. Is it already going? Good. Perfect. All right, well, thank you guys for coming. Um, most of you probably already know me, but I'm Nick Siebert. I'm currently going to Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Um, today, or yesterday, at around 4.45, Pastor Riley messaged me and asked, hey, do you want to talk about your seminary journey? I said, heck yeah, I do. So I threw this together. Um, it's just going to be kind of some insights into what I've been doing for the last six months, some ups and downs, and um, what's been going on. So, let's begin with prayer. Um, let's pray. Trying God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, weather, and thank you for safety that you've got us here. We ask a blessing over this conversation that my words uh, may impact everyone here, and that they may be inspired by the Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, a little bit about myself, if the clicker wants to switch, if I need to get closer. It is. There it goes. I'll just stand over here since everyone's over here. Um, the next slide says, talk about myself. Go ahead and click it. Okay. Um, so I've been a member here at St. James for my whole life. I was baptized here in February of 2002 um, by Pastor Riley, or Pastor Rimfer. Um, yeah, I, I was confirmed here. Um, I've wanted to be a pastor for since like first grade um and that started out from i how i've decided is it was a skit in cub scouts where we all got different roles and i was the preacher and ever since then i was like yeah i want to do that and so the holy spirit has guided me in many various ways and that is where i'm at now um let's see i really enjoy photography. Um, I, I didn't put any of my photos in the presentation. All of these came from LCMS Photography. Um, they've got some beautiful pictures on there from different churches. Um, but my parents are Kelly and Phil Siebert. I've got a younger brother and an older brother. So I have a niece that I adore. You often probably hear her in church. Um, but yeah, I, I, photography-wise, I enjoy taking pictures of, with my friends and stuff like that. Um, when I did my district interview, that was what one of the things that I told the um, president more was that if I got to a church that couldn't afford a full-time pastor, maybe I could start a photography business um, to have some supplemental income. But yeah, I think that's enough about me. We'll go over my first semester at seminary. So, um, first semester, just click it. Thank you. What classes have I taken so far? Well, first they split theology up into four different sections. 
So we've got historical theology, systematic theology, exegetical theology, and practical or pastoral theology. Um, I've taken one from each section so far, um, and I'll just kind of talk about those. First, historical theology, pretty self-explanatory. It talks about the history of theology and um, theology within history as well. So we talked basically all from the beginning to current today, uh, gave some history on the LCMS as well. That was, that was a fun class that was taught by Dr. Bodhi. Um, and then we have Intro to Systematic Theology. This class, um, Systematic Theology is essentially trying to categorize your thoughts in a theological way. So like the Book of Concord is Systematic Theology. Um, now, this class I struggled with at first because they started very broad, and I'll talk about this later a little bit, and then went narrow. And starting broad is very difficult because we're, start, we're asking questions like, what is a Christian? How do you answer that question? Well, that's a difficult answer, difficult question to answer, um, considering I've only been a Christian. And so who am I? Asking very fundamental questions like that. Um, pastoral ministry is the next class I took. That was my practical class. And that we talked about, what does it mean to be a pastor? Um, different things like that. Within that worked very closely with my RFE congregation. Uh, that's a residential field education. So they assign us a congregation while they're there, and that's the congregation we go and we serve at, and that's our church we attend. And within that scope, we work closely on trying to learn about this congregation. And I'll talk later about a congregational exit Jesus project which was interesting to see the ins and outs of the congregation and things like that. And lastly, interpreting and communicating the word. This was with um, Jeff or Dr. Jeffrey Oswald. I'll describe him as a very dapper man. He is a very great guy. Uh, enjoyed his class. Um, but, yeah, uh, exegesis is essentially how to understand the Bible and how to read the Bible. And so that was just an introductory course to that. We also take other courses like Formation Lab, Greek Lab. So over the summer with uh, Dr. Lewis, I took Greek Lab, or Greek. Um, that was intense. You're there from 8 to noon and then have about four hours of homework every night. So it's about eight hours every day you're working on Greek. Um, and then you get to hang out with friends. And, but it is a very unique experience because you're with a group of guys all doing the same thing, all struggling together. Um, so it was great. Um, we made it through. Um, and then we also, Formation Lab, I have Dr. Joel Bierman, who I absolutely adore. Um, and I mean that so seriously. Most of our Formation Lab has been us coming in and asking questions to this this professor, and he just rattles off answers. And they're the most random questions. Like, this is one question I had. I work in the mail room at the, the seminary. And in the mail room, sometimes we'll have people drop off donations. Well, one of the donations was from a previous pastor, and they had dropped off a communion kit that they brought for shut-ins. All fine and dandy, and dandy until I open it, and there's still wine and wafers in there. And so my first thought was, okay, was this used with communion? What do I do now? So this is right before Formation Lab, so I bring it into him, and um, he, I ask him, what do I do with this? When he goes, well, Nick, if you want to be pious, you can go and bury it. So I went and buried it. Um, but... It's just fun to ask him these random questions that you don't always get to just ask. So that's a lot of what Formation Lab is, and I'll talk about that a little bit as well. 
So, um, what else do I got up here? Key learnings and insights. So, um, from systematic theology, one of the things that I have made or I've learned most is making distinctions. As a pastor and as a theologian, you have to make distinctions. And what this means is, how many of you have heard of the distinction law and gospel? So, yes, okay. So law and gospel is a distinction we make in Scripture, and in pastoral care, we make distinctions as well. An example of this. Someone comes to me, like, well, we'll use abortion. Someone comes to me and asks after the service, I've never seen this person, and goes, can I be a Christian if I have an abortion? With no context, if I answer this question and I say yes, well then I don't know what this person's thinking. If I say yes and in this person's mind, they're about to go have an abortion, I just gave them the approval to go and have this abortion when I didn't know the context. Same situation, I say no. Now I'm giving, not giving them the approval. So we've been trained to ask this question, why do you ask? So if you're ever in pastoral care with Pastor Riley and he asks, why do you ask? You probably learned that from the seminary. But um, there's many different distinctions. We've got 2KR, two kinds of righteousness, uh, justification, sanctification. Um, There's probably some other ones, but I'll learn those eventually. And then in pastoral ministry, we talked about um, insights. And I'm sure Pastor Riley did this on St. James, which I think is really interesting. We have a website called Mission Insight. And in this website, we can look at statistics about the area around St. James. And so I did this with my RFE congregation, and it gives you literally anything you could ever think of. It'll talk about how many people are single, how many people are married. It'll talk about um, diversity within race, diversity among income, and all these different things. And it's interesting to see, because then it, you can see it reflect in your congregation. My um, RFE congregation is probably 90% white, 95% white, maybe even more than that. And that makes sense when I look at the statistics and I see that around 80% of Belleville is white, or at least in that neighborhood. So these are different things when you're starting to ask questions of, why are, why are things like this way? Well, maybe it's the way the community is, instead of trying to think that there is something wrong at your congregation. That's one of the things that we, we talked about um, within interpreting the word. We talked about, um, or sorry, historical theology, how to properly read a historical document um, reading it in context, asking yourself questions about what is this person trying to say instead of, this goes with interpreting the word as well, but instead of reading something and saying, oh, this is speaking to me in a 21st century context, when we should try to understand what is this person saying in their context, in their um, societal, their societal area. So that's kind of an overview of what I've learned in this first semester. Um, same thing with uh, Greek. I learned Greek, and I thought about um, putting Greek up in the presentation and going through that with you, but then I backed out because I don't know Greek very well. <laughs> so, um, talk about my spiritual journey. Um, I've talked about a little bit about how I've wanted to be a pastor since around first grade, so ever since then, it's been this up and down time. Um, there is a period between third and I think sixth grade um, where my grandfather had passed away, and um, this is, my dad has now said that at that time he was angry with God, and we had stopped going to church. So during these fundamental 
times in my youth, I missed a lot of Sunday school, missed a lot of church, but that didn't stop um, my faith. So I um, eventually started coming back. I I give praise to my great-grandmother for that. She continued to be on us about going to church, still continues to be on us about going to church, and um, I, I praise her for that. And I, I thank her for being that person in my life. So seminary is this unique experience that gives us different places that we are able to grow spiritually, um, not only personally, but as a community as well. One of those is uh, going to chapel every day. Um, there is nothing like being with your fellow fellow classmates and going to chapel and praying and and um, serving the Lord in that way. Um, personally, one of my goals is to pray matins and vespers every day. I fall short on this quite often. I usually try to get vespers in. I, you, if you know me, you know I enjoy sleeping, and I don't enjoy getting up too early. But that's going to change. <laughs> I've been saying that for quite a while but it's going to change eventually. So my goal in this next semester is to get up around 6.30 and spend some good time making coffee and, and then reading the Bible and stuff like that. So um, some of the activities that I enjoy that help with formation of my spiritual formation is going to chapel every day. Weekly we have um, the Lord's Supper. We also have the Lord's Supper at my home congregation weekly. Um, or home congregation, RFE congregation, and then also formation labs. Um, I didn't speak too much about the formation labs. I, I said that we get to ask questions, but it's also a time for us to make goals for ourselves and to grow as a person. Seminary is this, this unique place where it's kind of a fast track of sanctification. And it, it, they probably don't want us saying it like that. But it's this place where they, they want you to be a good person, and you're going to be put in situations that you need to be a good person. And so sanctification is more than that, but that's how I'll narrow it down. But um, we also have modules, and I've talked about my RFE uh, congregation as well, that they, um, they help us and form us in um, our spiritual life. So, let's see. So, community engagement. What are some things that I've done around the, the community? Well, I hope I change this. So, one of the biggest things that they have really instilled in us is going to chapel. Because when you go to chapel, you're building these... Um, these connections with people. And that's how I've known most of the older guys and is through going to chapel and being in the chapel choir and things like that. Um, also going to seminary events. A lot of the events have alcohol, and maybe that's what gets people, but it's also a great time of fellowship and hanging out. So some of the ones that I've gone to are Profensteins. These are, these are a lot of fun. They essentially what happens is a professor gets up on a stage and talks for a couple of minutes, and it's just a time for fellowship, just hanging out. Um, Dr. Bodie, the historical professor, talked about the exorcism that took place at the seminary, um, and that was in October around Halloween. We've had different ones. I also very much enjoyed the block party. So they had a, um, basically where all the professors live on campus. They had a block party there with all the professors setting up stands, and we'd be able to walk around with music and um, hot chocolate because it was in December. They also had their Oktoberfest, which is a fun time of just German music, German food, um, beer, and just hanging out with friends. We have Christ in Film. This, um, they used to have a, a film festival there. Festi- festival, right? Um, at the, the seminary. I'm not sure if that's happening this year, 
but at least once a month we meet, watch a film, and then we talk about how the, the character portrays Christ. So December we watch Die Hard, um, because that's a Christmas movie, and we talked about how the main character um, can be seen as a Christ figure. It's important to know that it, we're not saying that this person is Christ, but they have certain characteristics and you'll see this a lot in different movies um, where they might use the word Jesus Christ in the movie. Um, and it's just different things that portray or self-sacrifice within the movie, things like that. Um, every Tuesday we have a bonfire um, in front of ISO. Um, that's something I, I guess I didn't talk about. I'm living in ISO on campus, so it's, um, we call it our personal frat house. It is not a frat house, um, but, but we, it's a bunch of guys all living together, and it's a lot of fun. I don't have a roommate, but I've got friends all around me, and so my door is all open quite often, and I've got people pop in, and we'll talk for a couple hours and, and things like that. So how am I engaged in, oh, one more. There's also cookouts. These were great because... Our meal plan for living in ISO does not include Friday nights. So they would have a cookout on Friday nights over where all the married people live. And we would go over there and it would be a great time to get to know the married people. Because ISO is the single living isolation. It's far away from all the other people on campus. Um, but it's a great time to just be able to talk, get to know them, um, and stuff like that. So, the local community, how am I engaged in that? Well, the main way that I'm doing this is through my module. My module is um, at a, an adult daycare, and it's essentially where I go in, and I will pray matins with um, people who have special needs, or if you're elderly and not able to take care of yourself, and your um, family member needs a little bit of a break, um, they will take you here and um, do different activities. And one of those is I come in and I will pray with them. Um, and it, it, it's probably been one of the most impactful things for me at the seminary, seeing people who have special needs and their joy for the Lord um, and being able to memorize these songs. Um, it's just beautiful. It, <laughs> It may not sound great musically, but when you hear them just singing Amazing Grace or, or singing How Great Thou Art I, or Jesus Loves Me, it, it, you can't help but smile knowing that, that they, they love God and knowing, even more importantly, that God has chosen them and God loves them so greatly. Something else that impacts the, the community is our life team. Um, so I, I've been a part of that as well. And so one of the activities that they did, I think that was in September, they would go and they prayed at a local parent planned parenthood. Um, they prayed outside of there. And um, they also planned different discussions. One of the things, um, and I, most of these are open to the public, they had a um, stillborn um, memorial service and that was very, towards the end of the semester, very impactful, um, very emotional. They are also planning in the next semester a discussion on gender dysphoria, which is going to be um, interesting from a, a religious or Lutheran perspective. That's going to be given by Dr. Rockenbach. Um, he's, he's a great, interesting, great guy. He's got a lot of his area of expertise is psychology and stuff like that. So... Um, what do I enjoy most about seminary? Well, let's see. Boom. What classes have impacted me the most? Um, and this goes with what I've enjoyed. They have all, all of my classes have impacted me in different ways. One of the classes I would say that's impacted me the most is probably systematics because, and this is where I'll talk more about how we started broad. We start asking questions like, 
what is your story of everything? What in the world does that mean? I didn't know until probably the last week of class what that really meant. And I probably still don't even know. You probably don't even really know, Pastor Riley. But essentially the idea is that we all come from a different story and we all have an explanation of the story of everything, where everything came from. And so that's where we start. As a Christian, we live by a certain account of everything. And this is really these fundamental questions that we're asking. How is a Christian different than someone who is Jewish? Well, a Christian lives by a certain account of everything. A Christian lives by the Christian account of Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. A Jewish person would live by their own account of how everything came by. And that's how we identify each other. And so it's really made me think differently and formed my thought differently. Um, and that's and then we moved into these distinctions. And this is really where it started kind of hitting me of, man, I'm really bad at theology. <laughs> because people, so in high school, I started different group like a fellowship of Christian athletes. I was known as that Jesus freak. I was known as the person who was going to be a pastor. People knew me as a Christian. And so I, they would ask me questions and they'd come to me. And I realize now that I'm really bad at theology and that I'm really bad at trying to answer these questions properly. Because that situation before, I never asked, why are you asking? Because that gets at the core of these questions. But once again, it's, it's the distinctions that helps. Um, another distinction, I was talking to a pastor before the service about uh, being a theologian of the cross, being a theologian of glory. What does that mean? Um, I'm not going to give you an answer because, you know. No, a, a theologian of glory ultimately tries to make God look good, tries to explain God away, um, when in reality, we can't explain God. Um, God is God. You are not. That's Dr. Okamoto's famous, famous thing. So, um, what professor has impacted me the most? I, I will say probably Dr. Bierman is the answer to this, mostly because, for one, I've really enjoyed him. I, I read one of his books before I even went to the seminary on a case for character, trying to understand virtue ethics in a Lutheran way. Um, but I, I enjoy him as a professor because he's just honest with you, and he, he doesn't try to jump around things. He's just going to give you the answer, and he's very smart, and you can just ask him things. And maybe this is because I've, I've only had him in formation lab, and I haven't had a chance to have him in any other class where he can, you know, tell me how things are and actually teach me rather than me asking questions and him just answering but so far, that has been, he has been my, my favorite professor. Um, Dr. Prieto is also an amazing pastor, amazing professor as well. Um, Dr. Prieto has preached here before. Um, so him and I have that connection. We've talked, and he's been a great mentor as well. Um, but in, so I'm excited to have him next semester, and I'll talk about that as well. Let's see, a transformative moment. Um, for me, man. So, I will be honest, and maybe the questions go together, because the moment I'm going to talk about with my peer was pretty impactful. But during the end of the semester, they have all of these beautiful services. Christmas is coming, and so they... They really go all out. And it just so happened that, like, within the span of two days, they had three beautiful services. One was the, the stillborn um, service memorial. Um, and then they had a, 
a Christmas carol service, candlelight, and there was one more, um, or maybe it was just two, but, and that was a time of serious reflection. Oh, I remember the other service. It was a um, boarhead service at a local congregation down there. Have any of you guys been to a boarhead service? They are beautiful and just so impactful. So essentially the premise is it's set in the medieval era and you're seeing all this big pageant going on. You have the king and everybody coming and dancing, bringing him gifts. And then it switches and tells a story of Christ and the shepherds and, and then Mary and Joseph. And I'm getting goosebumps now just talking about it because it's so beautiful. And then everybody from the pageant from the medieval time comes and they bow down to the baby in Mary's arms. And then the last one to come, very, very um, triumphantly, is the king who was from before, and he bows down, like, head to the ground to the baby of who's Jesus. And that was very beautiful, um, very impactful. Um, cried in all three of them. And so that was a time that just really, I don't know, emotionally kind of transformed me of, yeah, this is, this is real stuff. Um, this is what it's like to be a Christian, and this is, this is who our God is. Um, an impactful moment with my, my peers. This was with one of my friends down there. Um, he, we were, so one of the things that we do, we have chapel every morning. And then during the summer, we got together and did an evening prayer before everybody else got back. We didn't know it was a, really a thing during the school year. But uh, we did evening prayer every night and different people would lead it and this night me and my friend were going to go there but no one ended up showing up and so him and I sat in a pew and we chatted and we talked about life we talked about our struggles with different sins we talked about our families we talked and talked and then we prayed for each other and prayed over each other and that was probably one of the most impactful times that I've had there at the seminary with one of my peers is he, we have just bonded right here through this mutual um, acknowledgement of sin and, and more importantly the acknowledgement that God is king and he is the one who is going to be able to save us and through our prayers to that king. Um, so that really impacted me and we're, we're still very good friends. Um, it's only been a semester, but, and, and we still pray for each other often. Um, and, and this isn't just with him. That is the unique experience with seminary is you have guys you can come and talk to all the time, and, and they'll come and talk to you. And in fact, at the, the beginning of the semester, they gave us a little pamphlet that talked about um, how to talk with your friends. And in fact, not to say, oh, it's okay, when they come and uh, if they said they did something wrong to you, but instead say, no, I forgive you. And that's an encouragement that I give to all of you, is if somebody comes to you and, and admits that they did something wrong to you, don't just push it off, but actually say, no, I forgive you. Um, those words have a lot more impact. But this little pamphlet talked about how we can use God's word not to give absolution, but to, to offer the forgiveness that God has for us. Um, so that was definitely one of the major impacts. Um, insights into the ministry. I've definitely kind of gone into this a little bit already, um, but I'll go into it a little bit more. Let's see. Next one. Cool. So practical applications. It's going to be the, the distinctions again. So... My example with abortion goes right here. If somebody comes to me with a problem and I make a wrong distinction, I can give them the wrong impression, and in turn, it can have fatal errors. So even just in this first semester, there's, there's great impact on the real world and what I'm going to be experiencing in the pastoral office. Um, and then applying these theological concepts, same idea. And the insight as well goes along here with um, 
the pastoral ministry of trying to understand the congregation. I really enjoyed. So we have a, a practical theological framework that they're they're giving us, and within this, one of it is just to sit and watch, just to try to understand the congregation, to meet people, listen to them, know their needs, and just to to be there before we start trying to make any changes or anything like that. And that's been super great. Um, with interpreting the word, that's also really impacted me. Um, too far, far too often, I, I often try to read scripture. I'm like, man, that's speaking right to me. And while scripture definitely has an impact on us today, sometimes we need to understand what is, what are, what is he really trying to say? Who is his intended audience? Oshawa would be glad that I used a word like that, intended audience. But um, yeah, so the, these, these classes have impacted me already so far. Um, and, and even like historical theology, giving me ways, it was just a small little book, but this small little book has helped so much about how to properly read a historical document. It's questions to ask when reading this. What is the author trying to say? Who's the author's intended um, reader? Things like this. It's super helpful. Um, and then looking forward, what classes am I going to take next? Well, go one more. So my future classes, next semester I have a class called Creeds and Confessions. I think we're going, I, I, I don't know fully what these classes are, so I'm going to make a guess. Um, but I think this one we're going to talk about the creeds, and I think we're going to talk about confessions. Um, gotcha. We study the Book of Concord. Um, if, makes sense. I think that falls under confessions. So, and then this next class I'll take, or this next semester, I'll take homiletics. So I'll be able to um, preach. Not, maybe not well, but I can preach. Um, and so that'll give me the ability to hopefully come here next May. I want to put that on the calendar. And um, I'll be able to hopefully give a sermon. Um, and then we'll study the Synoptic Gospels. And then also... Um, the pastor and the church and mission, um, and then ministry in the early church, and then the Pauline epistles. Um, so those are just my future courses that I'm planning on taking. Um, yeah, I, my goals. So I have some academic goals. I want to keep my grades up. I actually, in fact, have to keep my grades up, or my my scholarships will be taken away, which is not good. Um, then I've got some personal health goals. I'm a big guy, need to lose some weight. So I've got a goal for that and ways to do that. Um, financial goals and spiritual goals as well and ways just to grow in those areas and um, just to keep growing as a, as a person and, and as a created being, my God, as we heard in the sermon today in the psalm. Um, so I, I talked about my story of how I became or wanted to go into the ministry, um, my aspirations for ministry. I, I keep hearing Vicarage is going to be here before I know it. Um, it feels really far away, but um, I, I, I trust that these people are, are right. So I, I don't know um, where I'll be for Vicarage, but my hope is I want to go, I've used the word exotic. Um, I want to go somewhere different. I've been in the Midwest my whole life, still in the Midwest in St. Louis. So I'd like to go to the East Coast, West Coast, somewhere like that. I think that'd be fun just to see how Lutherans are in different places. Um, and people also ask, what do you want to do? And I've always thought the answer is be a pastor. But I've realized that being a pastor, you can be a lot of different things. Um, so how I've started answering this is I want to be in a congregation. I want to be where the people are. I want to be where um, I can help someone. And not that the other pastors can't help, but um, yeah, I, I have no desire to be a teacher in academia. Um, I'd rather be where you guys are, um, where the people are, and being able to lead you and give you the gifts 
um, that God has distilled. So, all right. Well, that it's been about 40 minutes. I didn't think I was going to be able to talk that long. Um, any questions for me? So where you're staying in the isolated part? Yes. So they call it a isolation is the fancy word for it. It's quite literally like a dorm room. Yeah, so it's just a room with buildings. They did just announce that they are building um, apartments or or rooms for new seminarians. They said it's supposed to be done by our fourth year. We'll see if that happens. (laughs) But that'd mean I would be able to, um, to live in one my fourth year, but we'll see. It, it does. It is. Uh, other than the bugs, I live in the basement. Um, I get hot, so the basement's nice because it's cold. Um, but yeah, bugs are gross. <laughs> There's so. RFE or residential field education. Yeah. Nope. So I'll, I'll, I'll stay there, and then they'll send me somewhere else for Vicarage. Um, this is just within about an hour of the seminary. And then so we travel there often. And then, no, they'll, they'll give us a call to a Vicarage somewhere. And then we'll go back there our fourth year. So at my RFE, there's two right now that are in Vicarage. So next year, there will be three of us there, um, and we will have different roles. That'd be my first, first year. Yep. Four years. Yep. Yep. So. That's a great question. Um, honestly, I, I, I don't know what I expected. I, going to QU, um, that was not what I was expecting. Um, and so... Maybe in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. Um, yeah, that's the, yeah. I don't know. I enjoy it, um, but I'm not sure exactly what I was expecting. It, yeah. What I will say is, one way that I, I am kind of shocked is most people did not study theology before they went to seminary. Um, So this is their first dose of real theology classes. Like, I know two guys in my class who went to film school, um, and they ended up at the seminary. So in that way, it's unexpected. But in other ways, it's, yeah, I'm surrounded by Lutheran guys who we all believe the same thing, um, and love the the same God and worship Him together. So, um, the, which is different from QU because QU is Catholic, and so uh, yeah. Did you study theology? I did. Yep. So I, I studied theology at QU. Um, most of it was pretty ecumenical. Um, some of it was like theology. <laughs> ecumenical means that it's it's open to everyone. Um, the there are a few classes like theology of the church um, was leaning towards the Catholic Church being the one true church. Um, there are classes. It was interesting the the theology professors there. One was a staunch um, Protestant and one was a, a Eastern Catholic. Who um, very interesting guy. Um, yeah, the, uh, very ecumenical. Um, yeah. Assuming that helped you when it came to life. It did. Well, in fact, yes, it very much did because it, it, for the last four years I've been thinking about the Bible and thinking about theology. Um, and it's also one of the main things is how to discuss theology with someone and not um, be 
hurtful or not to like downgrade someone. Um, because I, I had friends all the time we would discuss theology. They were, were also theo- theologian, theology majors. And they, they were staunch Catholics as well. And so we discussed theology all the time. T- free will, things like that. So we, yeah. And that, it is, that's one thing. Our, our discussions have become different because my friends and I will still disagree on things. Um, I'm trying to think. There, there's been something that my friends and I will get into different things about. Um, one of the major discussions that I've had um, that hasn't really been answered is when does the, the Eucharist or the communion really become the body and blood of Jesus? Is it when we eat it or is it um, when, when the pastor prays over it? And there is no correct answer really. Uh, we don't know for sure. So, Any other questions? Favorite part about the seminary has probably got to be chapel every day. Um, I, I really enjoy being able to be in God's house. Um, even though sometimes you get this feeling of like, man, I could go take this like 45-minute nap in between my classes. Um, it's important that I'm there. Well, <laughs> the balcony is a very quiet place. No. Um, yeah, that's probably got to be one of my favorite places. And also just the people. Your professors have all been pastors, so they all are pastors at heart. Um, most of them are still very pastoral in how they teach, um, so that's great. And, and your friends are all Christians, so it's, it's most of them are being trying to become pastors, and so they act like Christians, um, and so they're very loving. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Well, speaking of that as well, is a lot of them who have not been Lutheran their whole life, who in fact have only been Lutheran some less than two years. Um, so it's been fun having conversations with, with people who have become, like one of my friends, he, he was... Uh, 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 Pentecostal, and and was in it. He, I mean, speaking in tongues and everything. So it was great. Any other questions? We've got about ten minutes. Have you found out? Uh, I've asked other friends there how they decided to. Yeah. To so. Um, I, I've asked a couple of them. One, one I can think of said that it was kind of all that he had left. He had some friends who burned some bridges, and um, he had talked to his pastor, and his pastor was like, hey, you would be great for seminary. He's like, all right, I'll go. Um, so different things like that. Um, one, his dad's a pastor in the ELCA, um, and and his dad really is I, LCMS, but um, is about to retire, so he, he's staying ELCA. Um, but he sent him to St. Louis, so, and he wanted to, be, wanted to be a pastor. So, yeah, everybody comes from different backgrounds. And that's, that's the best part of just being able to get to know each other because I'm not sure if I know... Maybe a couple other guys studied theology. Um, but. <laughs> no, yeah, no. The food, I have heard it has been better in the past, but I can't complain too much. There's a salad bar that's always stocked, and that's good enough for me. Sometimes the main entree looks iffy. <laughs> Let me say this off the mic. Is always 
So they do. They do a great job. Um, John, if you ever get a pleasure of meeting John, he's a great guy. He's taught some of us how to dance during lunch or dinner. Um, he'll turn his music on, and it's been fun. So. Yeah, um, and that, more than anything, looks like Hogwarts. It's just a long, wind, long hall with stained glass windows, and it's beautiful. So, yeah, if you ever get a chance, come and tour. Yeah, the chapel's beautiful. Um, I should have put some more pictures of the, the chapel in there, but it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's pray. Child God, we thank you um, that you have brought us here. We ask that you would take us home safely. Uh, we thank you for delivering us the word today and that it may be in our hearts and instill faith and grow us in faith. Uh, we love you greatly and ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.